Um, I, I, I have some comments on this and, and I know some other board members want to speak, but I, it's not a, but I know board member Santos, uh, cited, cited the, the policy provision, uh, in her statement. And when I look at board items, so if there's a tail, uh, I don't, I don't play poker, but if, if there's a tail for me, I always look at an item that answers three questions. What issue are we trying to address, review, or clarify? What situation are we trying to improve? And what problem are we trying to solve? So when I look at items, I look at it from that particular vantage point. Secondly, when I looked at the item, which safety and security always is going to have my support. But one thing that resonates with me when I see flexibility, exemption, and waiver. Um, sometimes haste makes waste. And we have, as a board, really shouldered uh, the policy provisions, the transparency, the accountability, and the uh, opportunity for open competition. I, I concur that what you described, I would hope, is an isolated situation because there's no reason why a fence should have not either been prepared on an emergency basis uh, and not have to retain a security at a much higher cost. So I concur that hopefully that's an isolated case. Uh, but my interpretation of, of the policy provision is 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 the same as is board member Santos articulated and just for my colleagues I brought a copy of it so you can look at it it's one thing when we read it or it's read to us so you can just look at it and that's kind of what I looked at too is that that exemption that you're citing should be there under letter J the board may dispense with requirements for competitive solicitations for the emergency purchase of commodities or contractual services when the superintendent determines in writing that an immediate need, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, danger to the public health, safety, or welfare of other substantial loss to the school district requires emergency action. My interpretation is that that, that covers that. I'm never averse to reviewing this and seeing if we need to tighten it up relative to the discretion that schools have. Again, I was a principal for 10 years and I, high school principal with one of the most significant budgets in the district when we had 3,200 students there. So I know having access to that kind of capital. But the, when I looked at the item, and I support totally uh, recommend one, but I would probably look at explore amending said policies where appropriate. But on recommend two, if that appropriation is not determined, it is still saying to amend uh, initiate rulemaking. My concern is if there, within the current policy provisions, uh, exist that flexibility, then that may be something that needs to be reviewed. It needs to be tightened up. It needs to be put on the table. But I do have some anxiety around um, waiving certain exemptions. And if you look in the recommend, it's not explicit. To schools. Your intent may be schools, but if you look at recommend A, B, and C, I added the language that if you said security issue limited to schools, that may be something that we can tighten up on. But the way it's written, it would provide an opportunity for some waivers to be um, implemented for things that, that are outside of that. So I always uh, wake up when I hear waiver flexibility and exemptions because the state statute is pretty explicit on it our policy does cover it in there and if that's something that we need to take a look at i'll be i'm all in support of it um but i know that sometimes when you open up the pandora's box of 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 that level of decision making um that pandora's box is open you don't have competition you don't have solicitations you don't have bids You'll, you'll find yourself in a situation that we don't want to be in. And I think the board over the years has really 
uh, worked hard to do it. So I'm in support of, of the issue of, to avoid uh, where we don't have a situation that we, you say three months, six months, that, that's, that's, that's unacceptable within the framework of the policy pr provisions we have. Uh, but the item as it's written in the recommend, I don't know if it gets to the heart of that. Um, and again, I do believe that we may have some policy provisions on the books that may address that particular issue that may have not been followed. And if it needs to be amended to be specifically for schools, some flexibility, I will support that, Mr. Alonzo. But an open, perceived uh, waiver on these circumstances um, gives me a little heartburn. So just wanted to share that. And I kind of jumped it because Ms. Santos read it, but I had it here. So I think it's important for us not to have it read to us, but you can kind of see it in plain language that the exemption and the waivers are reflected in policy. And I interpret it as something that's not restricted to the district, that it can be utilized for schools and the superintendent has that authority. Last but not least, when those waivers are utilized, that level of transparency is governed by a process. So it's not somebody implementing a waiver and we don't know about it. There's documentation to say we did not do this because of X, Y, and Z. So that's that transparency, that's that codification, and that's that accountability. So it's not uh, 300 and something schools exercising a waiver and there's no documentation to know who did what and where because, you know, things can be what things can be because you may start exercising a waiver with vendor A, vendor A, vendor A, <laughs> vendor A, vendor A, and those limited thresholds start to be a cumulative uh, accounting of, of something that goes beyond the threshold. And for those of you who don't know what I mean, there was many instances, and not in this district, but across this country, where you have a threshold, let's say, of, of $15,000, and people just simply bundle. They'll bundle it. They'll do three, four, five different uh, purchase orders at $15,000 each to get around that. So I think we just have to be very cautious and careful with respect to the policy. But I'm in support of reviewing it, but I want us to be cautious about initiating rulemaking that is not restricted to schools and that does not give a solution to the problem that you described, which is a problem for me. And I share your thoughts about that being a problem. Thank you. Um.